Welcome back to FM Base. I'm Zealand. Football Manager 2020 is now out, and we've put together a nice, crisp list of 50 tips to help improve your Football Manager 2020 experience, to help improve your Football Manager game, and just to help you improve with everything that Sports Interactive has to offer and everything around it. And in order to spice things up, I'm gonna try and do those 50 tips inside 10 minutes, which is not gonna be easy. Let's get started. Number one, you can still get the beta. If you order it from a Sega approved retailer, you can play the beta, which is out for three weeks. Steam is included on that list. Just Google Sega approved retailer. Number two, different fun note, saves do carry over from the beta to the actual game, which is why I said Football Manager 2020 has essentially been released. When the actual game is released and all the beta patches have been applied, then it just treats it like a Steam update essentially. So you're good to go. Number three, getting into the actual game, the tie color can actually be set now to team tie color so that you don't have to go in and change the tie color to match the team anymore. Number four, for FM20, the online mode was revamped, so don't completely discount it, give it a try. They apparently were able to remove most of the things that made it crash. Number five, using the 3D face modeler is actually not that hard. All you do is click on it, upload a photo, identify where your eyes, ears, chin, sides of nose and side of mouth are, and then it's able to make you look like that, I was wearing sunglasses. Number six, be careful with the new club vision. It was hard enough when you only had to predict one season out what you were going to do, but now you have to potentially predict up to five seasons out what you're going to have to do. It's dangerous, uh, don't over guarantee. A lot of things can change. Number seven, don't be afraid to take the inductions. They're really helpful, they have new information every year, even if you think one facet of the game has changed, take that induction again. That's the tutorial thing that pops up and you think's annoying. Number eight, if you ignored the inductions the first time, but now you want to take them, all you have to do is click this question mark up at the top of the screen and you can take all of the inductions again. Number nine, this one's kind of cheap, but it's helpful if you want to figure out where to start too. You can actually start a game with a full database in every team and all you need to do is tick this and then you can see the attributes of every player in the game and then make an educated decision about where you want to go. Number 10, when you're in the meeting with the board, either when you're starting the game with your first team or taking a new job, they're gonna propose the club vision to you. That's not where you change it. You change it later in the inbox. Number 11, when you start a game, you will be given the opportunity to adjust the attributes of your manager. Well, now there's a button you can click that's suggested for the level you're gonna start managing at so that the realism is preserved. Number 12, if you're looking for the youth teams and the reserve teams that used to be on the menu side on the left, Go into the Dev Center, they're in there. Number 13, speaking of the Dev Center, this is a place that's fantastic for loan management. It makes it very obvious when you can recall and terminate a loan and when you can't, right here in this fun little menu. Number 14, if you want to adjust your transfer budget and wage budget, you can now go to not only finances, but Club Vision as well. In Club Vision, it's in the bottom right corner, and in Finances, it's on the far right, Make Budget Adjustments. Number 15, there are a few new training routines that you can try, like attacking overlap and play from the back and defend from the front. That's another one I like. Number 16, how do you change your individual training routines? All you do is click on the portion of the day that you want to train, and then you will come up with a bunch of options. You can try out the new ones, you can try out the old ones. Number 17 is learning about the match review. There's a match preview, which the training system will schedule for you, but the match review, for some reason, it won't. This is where you sit down and go over the analytics of the previous match with the players that were involved in it. Keep in mind, it's only available the day after a match is played. So if you're looking for it on another day, it won't be there. Number 18, you can make a ton of money from arranging friendlies in the preseason. You can actually arrange cups, leagues, all by clicking this drop down arrow. You add in a couple of big teams, you can actually make upwards of a couple of million dollars if you're playing at the very, very top. Number 19, if you don't know how good your youth and senior training facilities are, go to club info, go to facilities up at the top, and then you'll be able to see before you think Think about improving them. Number 20, the difference between junior coaching and youth recruitment is youth recruitment helps you find higher potential young players and junior coaching helps them reach their ability faster. So high junior coaching means they're going to come in with more of their ability already reached, but youth recruitment helps you find higher potential players. Got it? Number 21, what does the technical director do? There is a new attribute called judging staff potential. The technical director is in charge of your staff. Find somebody that's got good determination, discipline, motivating, 
and judging staff potential, and they're gonna be able to give you a more accurate report on your staff, keep you up to date on how everybody's doing. Number 22, the other new staff member for FM20 is the loan manager. Pretty self-explanatory. They're the, basically the head of youth development specifically for your loaned out players. Number 23, if you've always wanted to know what type of coaches you already have on the team so that you know what you need to go out and get, it actually shows you in parentheses right next to coaches under the staff part of the menu right here. Number 24, from the same staff screen, you can actually compare how good your staff is to the rest of the league in each coaching category. It's just this little bar graph down below where we were looking earlier. Number 25, there's something called the Code of Conduct. This is brought to you by your captain, and you're actually able to set before the season how long you're gonna find somebody for getting a straight red card or missing a week of training or something. It looks like this, and you can find it in the Dynamics section. Number 26, when you go to the Staff Responsibilities page, there are two tabs, one for you and one for your staff. Uh, under each tab is where you're gonna find the responsibilities allotted to either you or your staff. Number 27. Staff responsibilities is now divided into sections, so if you don't want to deal with a whole section of the game like the media, for example, you can go into that section and completely pawn that off to your staff. Number 28. When you go to the tactics screen for the first time, your assistant manager is actually going to put a thumbs up next to the few types of tactics that they think would work best for the current squad. Number 29. In the team report, you now have an analyst report which can show you how you're scoring your goals and how you're allowing them. Number 30. Always keep the team selection advice advice and the staff responsibilities on the staff side. It helps you make sure that you don't let any position or perhaps a goalkeeper slip through the cracks switching between cup and otherwise. Essentially, make sure you have everyone you want on the field all the time. Barring injuries, no guarantees there. Number 31, if you're super into the analytical side of the game, go to tactics. The farthest right on the top bar of tactics, go to analysis and you'll find more information than you're ever wanted. Number 32, if you're struggling to keep track of all of the clauses that have been guaranteed to players coming in or going out, there's a clauses section in the transfers on the top bar now. Go to transfers, clauses, it's all there. Number 33, there's a new position called the inverted winger. It works from attacking right and attacking left midfield spots, and it finishes somewhere between an inside forward and a winger. They look to cut inside, but they don't look to attack the middle of the defense. For example, Aiden Hazard is an inverted winger, not an inside forward. They live in the channel. That's the way to think about it, the channel. Number 34, if you're ever worried about your tactic leaving some area too open after you start playing matches, there will be a grid of squares that appears over your tactic. If it's red, if it, it's bad, if it's not red, it, it's better. The closer to red it is, the worse it is in terms of how well your tactic with its roles and positions covers that space. Number 35, try and tailor your tactic to the league you're playing in. For example, Tiki Taka is probably not going to work in the Vanarama North South, at least not yet. Route One's probably what you're going to want to look for. Especially the more physics based football manager gets, the more important it is to take into account what league you're playing in when coming up with your tactic. Number 36, be careful with tempo. High tempo is great to help pick the energy up in a game. But the higher the tempo is, the more you turn the ball over and the more shots are rushed and the less times they're on target. Number 37, watch for the hidden traits of your players. The player personality and their media handling style, which you can find by hitting overview and information. We'll tell you some about this, but the hidden traits are very complicated. And if you have a very talented team that constantly chokes in big games, that's something you can blame. If you want more information on that, I'll put a great link to an article about the hidden traits down below. Number 38, if you're on the basic skin and you want to see what the player's weaker foot is like, hit development and then tactics, and it'll be down in the bottom right. Number 39, you can actually make multiple shortlists. You just go into scouting shortlists and click right here on default and add a new one. Number 40, if you want to get a scouting report back in a particular player as quickly as possible, go to Scouting, Assignments at the top, and then Scout Priorities. Move the player to the top. They'll get the report in. Number 41, if you happen to find yourself out of the job, go to Staff Job Security. Then you'll see what jobs might come available soon. You can declare interest and try and hurry the process along. Number 42, if you want to add a new trait to a player, go to Training, Individual, Click on the player and then go to the right of their attributes. Under that, there's Discuss New Trait. There you can look at all of your options. I'll link you an article in the description to learn what the different player traits are. Number 43, press conferences can be given to the staff in the staff responsibilities menu. They do affect your relationship with players, but not necessarily enough to justify the amount of time you have to spend doing them. Number 44, the board can try and sell players without your approval if they think it's a good deal. But if you offer that player out and then turn down an offer that you accepted and then they accepted, they'll be yours for the rest of the transfer window. There's also 
also now an option to argue with the board before all of this has to happen. Number 45, you can get real faces, badges, and real names for competitions and referees and everything in the game. Links down below, but there'll be other videos to teach you how to do that too. They work in the beta as well, and then we'll transfer to the regular game. Number 46, if you get some important date sent to you in the inbox, but you won't be sure you'll remember it, if you go to schedule and then reminders on the bar, you can set a reminder for the day so that you don't miss anything. Number 47, don't expect there to be an unbeatable tactic in this game. They've completely rewritten the marking system, which is essentially what unbeatable tactics were able to break in the past. Number 48, that means don't get mad. Just adapt. When a tactic's not working, there's no perfect system, especially when you're trying to tailor it to your players to get the maximum effect. Number 49, Serginho Dest now plays for the U.S. Men's National Team. How'd that get in here? And number 50, remember, nobody's good at Football Manager all the time. Just do your best, and hopefully you'll have some amazing memories along the way. All right. Definitely didn't think that was possible, but I'm really happy we were able to fit that inside 10 minutes, if nothing else, just for the feeling of achievement. If you found it particularly helpful, I'd love it if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I can only do 50 tips in 10 minutes, but we're going to have a lot more than 50 tips when it comes to breaking down how to play the game, all the new features, all that fun stuff. You can also jump into my Twitch stream. We can talk about all the fun Football Manager 2020 stuff. You can tell me about how I missed the most important tip of all, or which one of these tips actually was able to help you out a lot. Just make sure you hit the follow button if I'm not live, and then you can know when I go live next on the Twitch. As for the comments down below this video, I'm looking to put together a video where I answer 50 football manager questions. I'm going to try and do that in 10 minutes, even though it's probably impossible. We're, we're going to give it a shot at some point. You can leave those down in the comments, message them to me. I don't care. I'm going to start writing them down. I've got a notepad. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helps improve your game and helps improve your feel for football manager 20 as you dive into the beta and then the real game. Again, the saves carry over. And so do all the face packs and everything. So it's basically like if you can get it on a Sega approved retailer on a computer, Steam is a Sega approved retailer, by the way. The game is out. So enjoy, have fun. I'll see you soon just around FM Base and the Twitch verse, Twitter verse, and there, there's a lot of verses. I'll see you soon. Much love.